10 or so attorneys generals from around the country were going to sue the government over this particular act and saying it's not legal. And a court could have come in and thrown it out immediately at that point, creating a much bigger problem, more chaos. And in this particular case, the president has given a sunsetting uh, answer to this. It's going to sunset in six months. He'll start phasing it out. So Congress, please go do your job. I mean, if he had allowed the courts to take a hold of this, it could have been much worse. It's possible. It's possible, but uh, what the courts generally tend to do with respect to injunctions is maintain the status quo. Uh, what probably would have happened was, uh, you know, it would have run its way through the courts. Uh, DACA 2.0 and DAPA, the one that did get stopped, was, was, was something that was going to come into effect. So it was stopped by a federal court. It was uh, stopped by the uh, Fifth Circuit. And, of course, uh, four to four when it made to the Supreme Court. But it probably wouldn't have stopped. There would have been some additional time for it to make its way through and, and quite honestly, reach the Supreme Court. Uh, but, you know, you're right to the extent that that is a possibility, that it could have been enjoined, could have been stopped immediately. But, uh, but the reality is you probably want to maintain the status quo, and a federal court judge probably would have maintained that status quo until, ultimately, uh, the Supreme Court would have heard it. Now, the president has said that he will take a closer look at this again if Congress fails to get legislation through and to his desk. And I appreciate the fact that you said, you know, you'd like to know what the president will, will be willing to keep. I, I think the president is open to the idea of finding a way to keep uh, some of these 800,000 people, if not the majority of them, in the country. That's the impression I get from watching him. Uh, but it has to come with some other components. It has to come with the assurance that we don't continue down the same path and repeat ourselves again. We've done uh, the amnesty thing with Ronald Reagan. We've got this uh, situation again. Now, I'm of the opinion that our immigration system isn't as, as broken as some would say. I think we have a failure to enforce the laws already on the books in large measure. And that creates problems. If you pick and choose the laws you would like to enforce, that's that's no rule of law, really. But this does give Congress an opportunity to step up and put something together. And in fact, Diane Feinstein yesterday, as we just had her here on the program, uh, made it pretty clear that DACA was on shaky legal ground at best. She made those comments on NBC News, and she was of the opinion that now is the time to do something. Now, this is Diane Feinstein, who just last week said Donald Trump could be a good president. Now, is that a crack in the armor? Is that a, a leading Democrat, which she is, without question, saying, we can work with this president, we can work with him on this particular item? Well, you would hope. You would hope. Uh, there is no doubt that I'm all for immigration reform, you know, totally in terms of uh, what we need to do. It's what we need. It, it's time for that to happen. And I do uh, like that part of it that pushes Congress to, to take action uh, to deal with that. And the only thing is, you know, the, the president basically initially tweeted, hey, Congress, do something about this. Uh, you're under, it, it's, it, the ball's in your court now. And then he kind of came back and, and said, well, I'll, I'll, you know, if they don't do anything, I'll take care of them or we'll do something later. That, that, that rhetoric, unfortunately, it, it isn't as, as pushing as it needs to be. I don't, I don't think the, the, uh, the mandate uh, is quite there when, when he tweets something like that. You've got the administration that's actually saying, hey, Dreamers, get ready to, to move on, go back to your home countries. So it's a situation where I'm hoping that uh, that the impetus is on Congress to actually do something in terms of uh, total immigration reform. They have so many things going on, and, and you know their inability to you know to do some other things is 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 kind of scary in terms of what happens because you know quite honestly, if if this continues on and nothing is done, I'm not sure what the president can do uh, with executive action, if he believes it was unconstitutional what DACA had done, what he can do except for the possibility of not deporting these individuals. Problem is, you know, you've got here in the state of Texas, we've got 100,000 DACA recipients working. We're looking at a $6 billion loss uh, to our economy based on that. And, you know, it's even, you know, multifold across the nation. But it's a situation that truly needs to be done with quickly, and, uh, and hopefully Congress can come together on something, at the very least, that, that, that resembles protecting these individual uh, dreamers. You know, it, yeah, I understand that it would have an impact on Texas, and I appreciate that, and I, and I certainly am hopeful that Congress can, can do this. But from a logic point of view, the argument that somehow it has economic activity and so, therefore, it should be protected. I mean, that logic doesn't hold. I mean, if you, if you use that logic, you'd say that criminals, you know, create economic activity. In America, I'm not comparing the two directly, but you get my point, Professor. Um, all right, I greatly appreciate your time. I got to run. Hopefully, Congress does their job because the other thing is, the president is actually taking the power out of the executive branch and putting it back 
in the legislative branch where it belongs. Professor Eric Cedillo, thank you very much. Well, I have a great heart for the folks we're talking about, a great love for them. And people think in terms of children, but they're really young adults. I have a love for these people, and hopefully now Congress will be able to help them and do it properly. President Trump's administration will wind down a program protecting hundreds of thousands of young immigrants who were brought into the country illegally as children. Attorney General Jeff Sessions calls the Obama administration's program an unconstitutional exercise of authority. Of course, we're talking about DACA. Eric Cedillo is an immigration attorney, a professor of law at SMU, and President Obama protected these people, Eric, with an executive order. Isn't there with an executive order always a chance that the next president or the one after can easily un? do it. That's very true. It's a a temporary fix to what's happening. And I think, you know, if you're looking at any kind of bright side here is is the possibility that uh, that Congress will do something that uh, that makes something more permanent in terms of the protection of these uh, these dreamers. Uh, So that is very true. And, uh, you know, we're we're hearing a lot of things from the administration. You know, one uh, side saying, get ready for, you know, the possibility of departing dreamers. Uh, The other saying, uh, Donald Trump tweeting that uh, he may, in fact, revisit if Congress does nothing. So hopefully this is an opportunity for Congress to come together and, and actually do something to protect not only DREAMers, but perhaps even do some uh, additional comprehensive uh, immigration reform. How did this come about? Where, where, how did this all of a sudden become a big issue that we need to, we need to repeal this now? It's a very good question. The uh, the state of Texas, along with about ten other states, uh, provided the administration with an ultimatum. They said if he didn't act by September 5th to stop the program, that they were going to uh, attempt to continue or add DACA, the original DACA, to the uh, DACA 2.0 and DAPA that they attacked and had it stopped uh, last year. So it's a situation where you know he had an opportunity to to kind of be have his hand forced uh, to do something, and and that's what he did. And in all honesty, that that was a possibility that, uh, that currently, if if uh, the state of Texas had moved uh, within Judge Hannon's court, which is a, a Brownsville uh, district judge, the possibility did exist that uh, that the original DACA could have been stopped. But uh, you know, it's it's difficult to say you know what would have happened. But uh, maintaining the status quo would have allowed DACA to continue at least until something happened. But again, uh, it's kind of done in terms of executive authority, and and now it's up to Congress to to do something about it. So let's talk about the people who are falling under DACA or did fall under DACA themselves. What can they do? What should they do? Can they apply for citizenship? Yeah, the the problem is, in order to ask for DACA, you you couldn't have any other relief. So it, when they made the uh, the petition, the affirmative request for DACA, they couldn't have had any other opportunity to do anything else. Now that changes over a period of time. You know, some of these are, there's been a five year program, so some of these recipients, their status may have changed. They could have gotten married, they could have had a spouse that uh, that could now presently petition them. But that's probably not the case in most instances. So you're looking at a situation where they may not have much recourse. And the big issue, the big problem, even if they aren't targeted necessarily for deportation, is they lose their work authorization. You're forcing them back into the shadows. You're forcing them back into situations wherein, you know, they kind of have to survive. So uh, a lot of these kids, I think it's at, at 90 to 93 percent clip in terms of employment. We're going to be looking at the loss of, of, you know, hundreds of thousands of jobs. You know, our economy is going to be affected by it. If Cong- Congress doesn't act, this is going to be a real problem in the next few months. So, uh, no. so hopefully they will do something to do something about it. Now, Sarah Huckabee Sanders yesterday said, well, yeah, these are jobs that could have been given to legal Americans. Does she have an argument there or not? You know, I, I can't say that she doesn't. You know, that, that's true to the extent that uh, uh, that if, if someone is, if a job is not being occupied by a DACA recipient, then the possibility exists that, uh, that it could be provided to someone else. You know, that's certainly um, a situation. But you've got to look at, you know, businesses don't hire people just because of, you know, DACA status. They're looking at the, at the best and the brightest for the position. You know, that's, a, that's a, uh, uh, what business is all about. So what you're doing is you're losing a, uh, you know, the best and brightest for those positions. You know, some of these kids are just incredible in terms of, you know, what they've done, their accolades and, and their educational attainment and other things. And a lot of them are bilingual. And uh, for a lot of uh, companies, that's a, that's a real important uh, part of uh, of what they need. So uh, it's true. You know, I can't deny that that uh, 
that may be the possibility where some jobs may be opening up. But uh, but in the interim, it's really going to affect our economy in a negative way. All right, Eric Cedillo, uh, an immigration attorney with us here on the Kogo News Live Line. Eric, thank you so much for your time.